so easy to fall in love with him. Just was a big goofball. So humble and obviously easy on the eyes. When Lindsay Jackson talks about her husband, Vincent, her eyes light up. He just was a magnet to be around, and he was a gentle giant. A straight-A student, a phenomenal athlete, Vincent Jackson was an All-American college football player, drafted into the NFL, spending 12 years as a wide receiver. Freeman fires, it is caught, touchdown, Jackson! Vincent was an amazing dad. He loves his kids so, so much. 14 years together and four children. From the outside, the Jacksons had it all. He had the perfect life. He did. But within a few short years, Vincent went from having it all to rock bottom. The former pro bowler discovered dead this past February at the age of 38. I think I've blacked everything out. Nine months later, in her first and only TV interview since his death, Lindsay Jackson says it's time to talk about the shock she received when she found out what may have killed him. The most feared letters in football, CTE. I felt really bad for him. He didn't know he had it. And I think had he known, he wouldn't have felt so ashamed or alone. No one should have to die in a room by himself. Part of her shock, Vincent had never been diagnosed with a concussion. It is way more than just concussions, and we don't know that, and we need to know that. It's the repeated head hits. It's the exposure. It's the amount of years you've played. So CTE is a, a neurodegenerative disease that's associated with repetitive hits to the head. Uh, not just concussions. There's a lot of misunderstanding about that. Dr. Anne McKee is one of the leading experts on chronic traumatic encephalopathy. She is also the neurologist who diagnosed Vincent. The weight is too small for uh, a 38-year-old man. It's uh, there's shrinkage here in the frontal lobes. One of the hardest aspects of CTE is that symptoms can take years to show up, and they can often be dismissed or mistaken for something else. They may be agitated, uh, impulsive. They may have a short fuse. They may have violent behaviors, either physically or verbally. They're often depressed and moody. The disease can only be officially confirmed after death. It's ranked in stages, from stage one, with headaches and short-term memory problems, to stage four, which includes symptoms of dementia, even Parkinson's disease. Vincent had stage two. Initially, Vincent had taken advantage of his retirement, finishing a degree in business management, opening a restaurant. For your first day of school, Danny's mom asked, he also was co-writing children's books with Lindsay, seen here reading to their own kids. But behind closed doors, he was struggling. His light kind of began to dim. He was withdrawing um, socially. The normal stresses of life became really hard for him to handle. Lindsay says he turned to alcohol. He shared with me once that alcohol made him feel calm and made him feel like himself, and that his brain was really fuzzy and that this made it not fuzzy. They drink to make themselves feel better, and then they can't stop drinking. The areas of the brain injury make it very difficult for them to go sober. I've given a lot of it to his friends. For years, Lindsay thought Vincent's struggles stemmed from their busy life, young kids, multiple businesses. But at one point, she did wonder, after seeing him forget simple things. I mentioned, like, do you think we should go look at your brain? He was adamant. There was no way that he could be a candidate for CTE. He had no idea. Lindsay says it's not that they didn't know CTE existed. She feels they were just underinformed about how it happens. When your husband was alive, there were a number of high profile players who were diagnosed mm -hmm. with CTE, including Junior Seo mm -hmm. and others. He was friends with Junior and very shocked when that all happened. I think when the diagnosis came out, it made more sense to him because he was in helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, and that's what Vincent thought caused CTE. By the time Seau died in 2012, CTE was well known inside the league. Just a year before, Dave Dursen shot himself in the chest, leaving a message to his family, asking them to donate his brain to science. They sent it to Boston University, where Dr. McKee runs the brain bank. We are getting quite a number of NFL players in the bank. A little over 90% show evidence of CTE uh, at neuropathologic exam. More recently, doctors have noted the possible links between CTE and violent behavior. 
just this week, Dr. McKee's team revealing former cornerback Philip Adams had stage 2 CTE. The 32-year-old died earlier this year by suicide after allegedly shooting and killing six people. McKee called his brain damage unusually severe for someone his age and says it may have contributed to his behavior. The thing about CTE is it makes people unlikable and it makes them unlovable. They can be depressed, they can be suicidal. This is a disease that not only destroys people, it destroys their families. Lindsay says Vincent's issues took a toll on their relationship and about a month before his death, they came to the tough decision to take some time apart. He had moved to a hotel yeah, that was to kind of take some stress off of his plate. I just always had faith that there was going to come a time where we were going to be able to reconnect. Weeks went by, and on February 15th, the sheriff showed up at the family home with horrible news. I had been telling the kids and letting them know that Dad was really sick and he's, he's going to get better and he's going to um, be back. And here they are in our living room and telling us that's not the case. What made you want to donate his brain? Vincent loved to help people. He wouldn't want anyone else to have the ending that he had. The NFL does have a $1 billion settlement agreement for retired players with serious cognitive decline linked to repeated head trauma and has donated millions of dollars to brain research. Both Lindsay and Dr. McKee say the league focuses too much on concussions and needs to work on awareness and messaging about the cumulative effects of head trauma. The NFL needs to overhaul their awareness campaign to concentrate on repetitive head hits that don't rise to the level of concussion. We reached out to the NFL about this story. In a statement, the league said the NFL continues to mourn with the families of Vincent Jackson, adding the NFL provides comprehensive mental wellness resources to current and former NFL players and the NFL family. We encourage anyone who may be suffering to seek help. Lindsay's focus is now on her young kids. Three of her four children currently play flag football, but not tackle. My oldest son just burst into tears and said, um, I'm not going to ever be able to play football, right, Mom? And I said, uh, no, <laughs> you're not. Lindsay says she hopes her husband is remembered for his enormous contributions off the field. Today, we are going to be reading one of our... Like their foundation, Jackson in Action 83, which helps military families. He wanted to be known for helping people. Um, that's just the heart he had. What do you miss most about his presence here? You said in some ways you feel like he's here. Yeah, he's totally still here. And I miss seeing him with his kids. He was such a good dad, a really good dad. I'm going to make it through as a family. We say we're the Jacksons and we can do hard things. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.